December 1998, a uh, family with four wheel driving along the Kakapotahi coastline um, in the area of known as Bolt Head, um, where they came across a, um, a body. Initially they thought it was a seal. They've phoned police. Police in attendance have come down to the scene. They've, they've robbed the body and found that, the, uh, that a male had a gunshot central to his forehead. A detective arrived at the house at Rotorua, asked me if we had a son called David John Robinson and then asked his birth date and then he said that his body had been washed up on a beach out of Ross. And because um, we didn't even know where he was. So that we were quite shocked, absolutely shocked. He was pretty unique. But you know what, he could be so lovable, absolutely lovable. He was like a Jekyll and Hyde character at times. I could talk to him that I couldn't talk with things that I couldn't talk with my other son. And David would listen and we'd chat away, you know. And yet, he was this other person that he could be so sly. We always hoped that David would get over it and settle down and that he would come home changed and wanting a relationship with us and with his brother and the families. And we, we couldn't believe he'd been killed because that's what we always, our focus was always on that and our hope was always that, that there would be restoration with David. He was capable of walking huge distances, so we're talking 40 to 50 kilometres quite easily. He lived from hand to mouth and whatever he could um, get his hands on through petty crime um, and that sort of thing. But my overall, overall impression of, of David was that he enjoyed his own company and he was quite comfortable being alone by himself for long periods of time. I felt guilty down the track and when the finger pointing at John and I began, I felt guilty, and John did too. But we had hardened our resolve. We wanted him to become a man, to man up. He wanted to leave home. We were helping him with that decision, but I did feel guilty, and so did John, for that time. I don't anymore. The case is obviously still open, cases like this don't get closed. We're conducting another review at present just to make sure that we've covered everything off. Going forward, I'm, uh, as I said, I'm very hopeful that we will get a result. There's certainly uh, information there that's going to send us to certain avenues of inquiry or further avenues of inquiry, so it would, be, it would be great for David's parents and the family for us to resolve this homicide and get some closure for them and the community. I'd love it to be resolved. It would be wonderful. You'd begin to wonder, oh, is someone going to contact me this year? You know, because that's what it becomes. You know, or who's going to contact us this year? You know, what's going to happen? Are the police going to call us? The grief's mellowed. It's a funny term, I suppose, but it's not intense as what it used to be. Because, I mean, we, I just cry. I, I still cry. I, I still cry for David. People just don't see that. We've had to get on with our lives. We take it out of the basket every now and again and we'd look at it and, it and it's just, it would really upset us. And the longer it went on, the worse it became. I mean, I, I can't believe that it's 24 years this year. I can't believe it. It's gone quick in some ways and yet it's been a long time. Incredible, isn't it? Poor Davey. He, he might have enjoyed all this, 
the limelight on him, you know. <laughs> he got it in his death, didn't he? And I'd like it resolved for David and for John, for myself and for my sister June, who absolutely believed and encouraged me because I said to her, June, I've just had it and I don't want to do it anymore. And she said, Joni, they're going to solve it one day. You keep hanging in there. And I'm doing it for her as well.